Welcome to Roadshow News Recap. Thank you so much for joining us. And this week's episode is all about Toyota all the time because this week the Japanese automaker showed off a cornucopia of new electric vehicles coming our way. That includes a Tacoma EV, an FJ Cruiser inspired electric vehicle, and a very slick looking electric sports car. On top of that, Lexus was also part of the announcement and we have an LFA inspired electric performance car on the way on top of a ton of new Lexus EVs as well. So this week we're diving into all of that and more because Toyota says it has 30 EVs coming globally by 2030. So welcome everybody to the Roadshow News Recap. Craig Cole is off. So once again, I've got Antoine Goodwin here. How's it going, Antoine? It's going pretty good. How about yourself? Good. You know, can't complain. It, it was really strangely warm here uh, yesterday and now it dropped like 30 degrees. So, you know, just Midwestern things. Uh, good times. <laughs> Fun times indeed. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, th- again, thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, please uh, like the Roadshow News videos, subscribe to the Roadshow News channel because it helps us out big time. And that's, of course, if you're feeling generous about it all. But with that out of the way, let's dive into the good stuff, Antoine, because this was like a out of the blue announcement, like, bam, here's Toyota with all these cars and we're going to build like 30 of them in the next 10 years or so. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting because, you know, Toyota's pretty slow to adopt anything, uh, whether you're talking about new dashboard technologies or powertrain technologies. And here they are uh, after having basically been uh, sort of criticized a little bit for not really uh, adopting electrification technology as quickly as uh, some of the other uh, competitors in the market, for example, Nissan, and then boom, here's our next plans for the next uh, you know eight or so years, and it, it's a buttload of cars. And the most interesting ones that you mentioned are the ones that are tucked into the back row. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, uh, but they said they're gonna do like 30 of these different EVs globally by 2030. Um, uh, and, and yeah, like I said, the one that's most interesting to me is the one that's uh, way, way back in the corner. Uh, the little tiny uh, FJ Cruiser inspired one, uh, a little compact, boxy SUV. Um, it's got a great look, chunky bumpers, really cool wheel design. Uh, it is a lot smaller, I think, than what most people think about when they're talking about an FJ Cruiser. Uh, like mm-hmm. I think the, the, the last FJ we saw was um you know forerunner platform so a big large suv uh this is smaller than a tacoma it looks like so uh, we're thinking something i don't know maybe jimny size which is even more exciting yeah i this thing looks really cool and and one of our colleagues actually pointed out it it kind of looks like the ft4x concept that we saw like back in 2017 at the uh, Mm -hmm. new york auto show And I didn't even notice that until I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of similarities going on there from like the design. It looks like they kind of took the FT4X and then, you know, mixed it together with some FJ Cruiser elements. And now uh, they have this neat little electric SUV, hopefully on the way, because Toyota says that many of these cars it showed are coming to production in the next few years. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I said, their their electrification plans right now are projected out to around 2030 when they expect to be building a lot more electric vehicles in their mix of vehicles. Uh, and so, you know, uh, with, with their sort of, uh, depending on what their battery electric technology looks like, it's probably going to determine how uh, quickly these rolled out. Um, a lot of these vehicles that they showed are just models, so blacked out windows, no interiors. Who knows how far along they are in development in most of these things. No specs on any of them. But considering that we've seen something like this kind of kicking around for a couple of years, this is interestingly, uh, aside from the BZ ones that we'll talk about in a second, uh, probably one of the ones that may be furthest along in its development. Yeah, yeah. I'd say this and then the uh, the Tacoma EV that our video producer just put on the screen. Uh, those two seem to be very good candidates for coming very soon compared to a lot of these other vehicles, which, you know, a lot of these other ones, they're kind of anonymous, like that maybe they might just be design studies, but it, it seems like there might be a lot of overlap. 
with things like I wouldn't expect every single one of these cars to foreshadow an actual production car. Like maybe two of the SUVs become one SUV down the line. And I mean, we should say that these are global plans, you know, so not everything you're looking at here rolling by on the screen is going to end up in a Toyota showroom here in the U S or North America, or or if you're in Europe, there were some some K size (laughs) utility vans in there that are probably going to be great for Japanese markets where, uh, you know, their work trucks are a lot smaller, fit down smaller roads. Um, people don't mind driving smaller vehicles. Uh, Mm you probably see some of those tiny concepts, uh, in, in European and other global markets. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, uh, basically with the way that, platform technology has sort of come with uh, scalable vehicle platforms and particularly with electric vehicles, with those platforms being scalable. um, Once you get that sort of skateboard of the battery and the motors and how many motors and what the charging technology is going to look like, I think that um, and one of the things that Akio Toyota said in his presentation is that it's going to free them up to explore a lot more weird little vehicles that maybe they don't build a whole lot of, but because Mm -hmm. it's scalable and because they're using they're going to be using established technology uh, at that point, then they'll be able to take a chance on building something like that little weird golf cart truck that they had over in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It makes so much sense. And Toyota underscored that this EV push is just like one prong to its zero emission strategy because, you know, you and I both know that Toyota has pushed fuel cells really, really hard. A lot of Japanese automakers kind of went, more so all in on fuel cell tech than battery electric technology for the past few years. But increasingly, it seems like, you know, unless there's some sort of crazy development where things flip the script, that EVs are going to be kind of the standard bearer that ends up replacing a lot of internal combustion engine vehicles for now. I mean, who knows what happens in five years or by 2030, we could see a totally different trajectory. Right. And then, you know, fuel cell vehicles, are electric vehicles they just don't mm-hmm. have a battery or they have a small battery uh, so right. it, you know, they can be co-developed uh mm-hmm. the, the, a lot of the lessons that toyota learned developing fuel cell vehicles probably came into play and are still coming into play with the developing of their battery electric technologies and then they can take that sort of shared uh electrified platform and you know maybe offer fuel cells in asia where it makes more sense offer battery electrics here in the states Uh, Maybe Mm -hmm. like what Hyundai is doing, pushing fuel cells more towards commercial vehicles and trucks uh, because of the energy density needed there. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of interesting things. Um, But I want to kind of come back to uh, that, what looks like a a slightly modified uh, Toyota Tacoma that they've got tucked over in the corner. That thing, uh, you know, speaking of things that are definitely going to come to the United States, uh, that will probably look a lot like they look right now. That, That Tacoma looks ready for the showroom. Uh, yeah. Yeah, to- totally. I-, I agree 100%. It's like ready to go. But the only thing I would say about it that kind of threw me off when they showed it, I'm like, it kind of looks like the Tacoma that's already on sale. Like, I know we're getting a new Tacoma, so you feel like they wouldn't show anything until they show that final design for a new one. Um, sure. But I don't know. Maybe the new Tacoma is going to be more familiar than we think. I Again, I think it would didn't... be uh, a safe bet to think that the next generation Tacoma is going to look a hell of a lot like the current generation Tacoma, because look at the last couple generations of Tacoma. Um, it's, true. it's it's a very small evolution. <laughs> it's, a, it's a successful formula. Toyota doesn't, like we said, like to take huge chances on something. And this is the Tacoma is one of their biggest and most successful vehicles in the United States. So they're not going to want to go too nuts with it. But, you know, the fact that we're seeing something shaped like a Tacoma kind of indicates that uh, at the very least that maybe we can expect an electrified or an electric version of the next generation of Tacoma uh, with with electrification maybe being uh, factored into the design of that platform from the ground up. Um, And I think it, it, you know, uh, with sort of the success that um, and the buzz that we're seeing around things, um, like the R1T from Rivian or the Lightning um, or the interest mm-hmm. that people have in the, uh, the Ford Maverick uh, hybrid. Um, Toyota's got to be looking at that and thinking this is going to be a great way to sort of introduce uh, electrified technology to a, an already established market that loves to spend money with them. Yeah, I 100% agree. Uh the Tacoma, the the bane of Craig Cole's existence. He's talked a lot about that truck on this show. But anyway, I think it's 
interesting also that we see a lot of legacy automakers who are rolling out electric pickup trucks. We have the Silverado EV that's going to debut uh, in just a few weeks at CES. Uh, the F-150 Lightning we saw this year. Ram said it's building a full-size electric pickup. There's the key. They've all been full-size pickups. The Tacoma is not a full-size pickup. So does Toyota see something where they're like, maybe it makes more sense to do a slightly smaller electric truck rather than do a Tundra EV, which could still be coming, but they clearly mm -hmm. wanted to show off the Tacoma. And again, they've got, you know, at the very least until 2030 to figure it out. And they're also talking a big talk about solid state battery technology. So there could be some space mm -hmm. saving that they anticipate that they'll be able to uh, take advantage of in the future. And another thing is that that's interesting about this truck in particular is when you look at the side shots, um, it, it kind of appears like the, the bed is a lot shorter than the bed yeah. on the current crew cad Tacoma. So um, who knows what they're doing, what sort of packaging with this vehicle, what sort of capacity you're going to get back there. Maybe this, um, like the Rivian R1T, is uh, more sort of going to be marketed as an adventure vehicle and not a work truck that you can just throw a couple of things in the back. Maybe like the, like the, the Hyundai Santa Cruz, for example. Yeah. Not a huge bed, um, but they've, they're doing flexible things at the platform. Maybe Toyota thinks that if we make the cab a little bit longer, we can maybe stick more battery under there and sacrifice some of the bed for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Who I knows? wouldn't surprise. It wouldn't surprise me. Like everything's wide open when it comes to EVs. We're gonna we see designers and engineers getting really creative with uh, these vehicles that uh, are coming out. I mean, the R1T has a kitchen you can slide out from the side of the vehicle for crying out loud. <laughs> it does. Um, and while, while we're on the Toyota's, before we move on to uh, some of the more practical, uh, they also showed off uh, what looked like a mid-engine sports car, though, uh, being electric. Uh, who knows where the engines are? They're probably coaxial or uh, with, the, with the wheels. Uh, but yeah. it is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous little curvy, orangish, yellow, uh, sporty concept that um, previews, at the very least, um, you know, what... Akio Toyota, known automotive enthusiast, uh, loves driving fast cars, uh, is sort of uh, looking at for maybe like a, a performance halo of the in, going forward into the future. Yeah, this one was a surprise. Uh, there have been many, many rumors for a long time that uh, Akio, uh, the CEO, wants to bring more sports cars into the mix. And we've seen that occur over time with uh, first, the the Scion FRS, which then became the Toyota 86. Now the GR86. You know we have a new Supra, uh, but both of those were partnership vehicles. Perhaps this would actually be something 100% Toyota. And you know we can't ignore the fact that it looks like a mid-engine car. You know, obviously no engine here, but you know the first thing that comes to mind is MR2. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's got some some uh, what a lot of the proportions of what Lotus is doing right now um, yes. with the sort of uh, electrified uh, performance vehicles they're coming out with. Um, it's a great looking car. Um, it's uh, I'm I'm really hoping to see more of this vehicle. I'm looking like looking to you know hear more about the development. Uh, what sort sort of um, you know interesting technologies are they using in the chassis? It's supposed to inherit uh, some of the secret sauce. Uh, from uh, the uh, Lexus supercar, um, so the LFA. Uh, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what's going on with that, and you know if we actually get a chance to drive it. Yeah, I mean of of what they showed, and we should tell you guys as the viewer, this is split into two strategies. So the cars we're talking about now fall under this kind of like lifestyle uh, umbrella of EVs, is what. Toyota called it. And then there's also the Beyond Zero or BZ brand, which we're going to get into here momentarily. So these kinds of more, I don't know, creative, expressive EVs are these lifestyle EVs. Uh, and I'm all about a lifestyle that includes a like mid motor mounted electric sports car and a, you know, a, gy a Jimny sized <laughs> off road SUV. I think those two sure. are the coolest. Precisely. It's, it's, I think it's going to be a fun time, hopefully, a very fun time uh, watching what Toyota does. Um, but the, you mentioned the Beyond Zero cars. Those are our best bet at what we can expect in the short term uh, because it includes a vehicle that we've already seen announced and we know mm -hmm. is going to production. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about that? 
Yes. So the Beyond Zero brand, it's a terrible name because uh, we got something that sounds like a copy machine, copier, copy fax machine, whatever you want to call it. And the BZ4X is the first vehicle in this Beyond Zero sub brand. Um, but during this presentation, Toyota was very clear about saying that the BZ brand is basically going to be like a sub brand. Uh, of Toyota. So there are going to be more BZ badged vehicles coming. And they showed uh, a few other vehicles, one being a really tiny uh, BZ concept. Uh, but this one, it's the red vehicle that you'll see going through. The, here we have it right here. Uh, this tiny little guy, uh, Toyota mentioned, is really only going to be targeted for Europe and Japan. So this is definitely going to be some sort of production vehicle because it's one of the few concepts they gave like market details on. But don't expect this one for North America. It sounds very much so like this will be targeted at other countries where smaller vehicles are embraced. Americans don't want to be bothered with climbing into something this small for some reason. But uh, yes, this one's just called the BZ Small. And then we have something called the BZ Compact SUV, which is... An interesting design because it it really shuns the recent trend of SUVs are tall, upright, and boxy. This is like a it looks like a sedan that's been stretched with a hatchback. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what you think about that because this is one of the more intriguing designs I think they showed. And again, like you mentioned, Antoine, these BZ branded vehicles are probably a very good look at the next EVs that we'll see in the U.S. first. Mm hmm. Yeah, it looks like a lot to like, um, uh, what is that crossover they have um, that I don't pay a whole lot of attention to anymore, the small one? Uh, uh, the C CHR, is that it? Yes, the CHR. I'm getting a lot of futuristic premium CHR vibes here from that roof yeah. line, the way that the sort of shoulder interacts with the, the I guess it's the C pillar since it's a coupe. Um, mm -hmm. Good looking car. Um, it looks like uh, it, it will probably play in that sort of, uh, Nissan Aria space. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it, if it comes out looking like that, they're going to turn a whole lot of heads. Um, again, Not a lot yet. of question marks about what the performance and range will be. And their big focus here is efficiency and getting those kilowatt hours per miles all the way down. So I don't think we're going to see them uh, challenging anybody for zero to 60 times or top speeds. This isn't going to be a, a ludicrous speed anything. Um, yeah. but you know, uh, I recently drove the, uh, the Hyundai Ionic five. And even when you're in this sort of like modest, uh, modest performance, uh, decent amount of range, really good, you know, uh, affordable electric car space, they're, they're still very charming vehicles. And so, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've got high hopes for what we can see from this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this one I think is very prom the most promising to me or most interesting, at least of the BZ vehicles we saw. Uh, but moving along on the BZ brand, they also showed a BZ sedan. Uh, they, they got fun with it and called it SDN, the SDN concept sedan. Ha ha. Uh, but this one, uh, I get like, electric prius vibes uh, like a little bit of like first gen uh i can't pronounce the car's name mirai mirai the, uh, the mirai. one is it the mirai i always want to call it something else for some reason but it's kind of like a blend of a lot of toyota designs we've seen and it it feels very production actually mm -hmm. still to me nothing feels like oh that's so super out there it's just kind of like this oh yeah like it, it looks like a toyota for sure Right. The, the, yeah, the thing is that, you know, it. you're seeing Prius. I'm seeing uh, electric Camry, electric okay. Avalon. I mean, yeah. it's hard to judge scale with these things because, again, concept cars, who knows how big those wheels are? Um, you know, we've only seen it on stage next to uh, the BZ4X, which I haven't seen in person. So I'm still kind of, you know, uh, trying to figure out how big that vehicle is. So mm -hmm. um, but I think you might be right. You know, maybe, maybe I'm thinking maybe about Camry sized. Uh, Maybe even the the current generation generation Mirai is a is a mid sized sedan. So uh, it looks like it's got plenty of space for people in there. Uh, judging by the the size of the wheels, the size of the headlamps, um, mm -hmm. but you know, it, it like you said, it does look very production ready. Um, I think that um, it particularly uh, on the flank, which we're seeing right now, um, I like the sort of simple design, simple profile. 
Um, I like the direction that they're going with the grill and the headlamp treatment. Um, it's, 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 it's a good looking vehicle. A lot of question mm -hmm. marks. Uh, not the yeah. most compelling of these, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that, you know, it's, it, it'll be, it'll, I don't, I have no idea what to expect from it when we're going to, when it actually shows up. I, I know that's the, that's the crazy thing with seeing all of these concepts this week. It's, it's like we got so few details that we can really be kind of creative and, and imaginative and take like some fun guesses right now where we're like, is this like an electric Camry, you know, like that would sell alongside the Camry under the BZ sub brand, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, compact SUV that we just spoke about is, is this like a, a swoopier electric alternative to the RAV4? Like it'll be yeah. fun, fun to see how Toyota wants to like peg these things alongside their traditional lineup, because the other uh, point that Toyota really wanted to underscore was, uh, we're going to talk about Lexus in, in just a little bit, but Lexus is going all electric, but Toyota is going to keep a mix of things still. So it's not mm -hmm. like what you're looking at here are like replacements for the RAV4, the Camry, the Prius, you know, like maybe one of them or none of them because, you know, those cars sell in big numbers and you'd be stupid to just kill them and be like, here's something new in its place. Right. And that's that's probably also a big part of the thinking of making BZ sub brand. Mm -hmm. um, so this won't be, you know, a, a Corolla uh, electric or, you know, a Prius electric unless Prius gets folded into BZ at some point in the future. Uh, I mean, it will be sort of its own thing. And uh, sub brands tend to live alongside your, your established portfolio. Yeah, um, totally. I mean, that's what Hyundai's doing. You just drove the Ionic 5. That's Hyundai's sub brand for its first EVs while it continues mm -hmm. to sell things like the Palisade. Or e-tron, similar. Yeah. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, the last actually the we, we just saw a second ago the 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 last one in this sort of group of BZs is yep. the the BZ SUV the the larger Large. mid-sized SUV. Yeah. Uh, Toyota says they're they're going to make a three row version of this. So I mean I'm obviously thinking something Highlander sized. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing about electric cars is that you know like who knows how long it's going to be right. Uh, to use the example of the Ionic, it's got a, a wheelbase longer than the Palisade, but it's smaller than the Tucson. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you if you stretch that out to something that you can fit three rows into, I mean, maybe it's going to be a vehicle that is smaller nose to tail than a Highlander, but has more space on the inside. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, and, you know, this is also probably uh, what's giving me my best guess is figuring out uh, how big that sedan next to it is actually going to be. Uh, because mm -hmm. it, it does kind of not really dwarf the sedan, uh, but it does sort of put the perspective of, of making the sedan look like it, it may be actually uh, a touch smaller than some of the Camry size. But yeah, um, while we're looking at this one, um, you see, I see a lot of sort of, uh, uh, you know, RAV4 Prime in the nose of this oh, yeah. one. Uh, but, you know, sort of blocked off. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's funny. I kind of thought the same thing. It, it looks like a RAV4 nose, but clearly they're making what we see in the BZ4X, the like fascia, you know, corporate face of BZ, because the mm -hmm. BZ4X face is definitely still there. But this overall profile also gives me really big uh, Mitsubishi vibes actually uh, the way it sits there it's like real blocky and chunky and nothing like the compact and nothing like the production bz4x um mm -hmm. which isn't a bad thing because uh i think you know modern mitsubishi design is really nice <laughs> yeah at, at the very least their cars yeah. look good now yeah uh so i'm not yeah. saying everything they sell are good cars i'm saying they at least look good <laughs> yeah agreed Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yes. But, you know, of of the sort of like, what is it, five BZ models that that, that are right out there in the front, um, which of those is the most compelling to you? Is it the the the, the BZ4X that we know is going to be coming or are you, are you more interested in that sort of sedan or uh, which one's got, got your sort of interest kind of? You know, I think they're all interesting in their own way. I um, I'm still kind of like, I don't know, I guess a traditionalist, because if I'm ever looking at like a new vehicle, I'm still drawn to sedans just because I feel like you can do more with them today and they're mm -hmm. a little bit more expressive. So like uh, the sedan, I think, is exciting. But if I was looking at the other ones, uh, that that compact SUV, but really looks like an SUV or a, a sedan on stilts. 
I think that one's really the most interesting because the large one, it, it, it's kind of like a no brainer. Like here's an electric Highlander. We sell oodles of Highlanders like no duh. We're going to build a three row thing in the same vein. Sure. I'm on the same page as you. The, the compact SUV is definitely the most interesting one. It looks like they had the most fun with the design. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it being sort of higher off the ground, uh, having space underneath for batteries, still giving you that sort of like very coupe like shape. Um, it looks like it is the one, aside from the one that we know is actually already in going into production, the, the, the one that is the most production ready of the three. Um, if I had my yeah. guess, I'd say this would be the next BC that actually gets an alphanumeric name and shows up on the, uh, on the calendar. Either this yeah. or the three row. Obviously, it's yeah. easy to go bigger with vehicles because you got more space for batteries and stuff like that. But um, yeah. I, I was just I was just looking at that compact one again, and I, I think if there's anything that gets a little uh, toned down further for production is that rear crease on the rear door where there and there's also this really round uh, wheel arch there. That's quite a stamp you'd have to do to produce it. Uh, I feel like that may not be as expressive if it makes production, if this is something that is as close to production as we're assuming it is, but looks like it is. Sure. You raise a good point there. You raise a very good point. That's a, that's um, a pretty expressive line right there. It looks great. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. I think there was a saying I heard once upon a time that for every pen stroke, a designer, uh, you know, puts on the paper an engineer sheds a tear because it's something else <laughs> they have to figure out how to translate to production or kind of thing. <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, you know, um, the, the, a lot of the talk is making these vehicles more efficient. I mean, uh, maybe they would push into lightweight materials. Maybe we start seeing composite body panels on these to keep weight down so that we can get to that, that uh, you know, over 120 something, 135 kilowatt hours per mile, I think is the sort of efficiency target for these. So, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they start thinking out of the box. Maybe this it's a molded panel or uh, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, maybe there's uh, some interesting happening there. Who knows? Um, yeah, probably not. It'll probably just be sheet metal because that's, that's cheap. Uh, and yeah. you, you know, th these, these are going to have to be volume sellers that make Toyota money at some point. Mm -hmm. So, but it's interesting. Um, yes. but you know, speaking of like that, that BZ4X, which AKA Subaru Solterra, uh, it's actually going to be showing up in a third iteration, duh. Uh, as a Lexus, uh, which we saw the sort of first example of, I mean, the, we got a name for that, the Lexus mm -hmm. RZ, um, and we got our first look at that, and uh, mm -hmm. we've got more information about what Lexus is going to be doing uh, with their sort of um, electrification program. Um, but then leading into that, uh, or bouncing off of that, uh, I think one of the most interesting things that Lexus showed as far as part of this big um, electrification push is going to be their Lexus, Ele Lexus, can't speak, Lexus electrified sports EV concept. Uh, this thing looks awesome. Oh yeah, this this is a. You know what it really feels like to me when I looked at it was a Lexus version of the Toyota FT1 concept. I get sure. hu huge vibes from, and if people don't remember, the FT1 concept is what previewed the Supra that eventually made it to production. A lot of, yeah. uh, you know, Supra lovers and Toyota fans were disappointed to see the FT1 wasn't as, what do you call it, uh, a good look at the production Supra that it, you know, what we ended up getting. But still, I feel like the proportions and everything like that look very, very close to FT1, which is not a bad thing because this looks really good i i really yeah. really like what they showed yeah that nose is is a hundred percent ft1 uh the rear end with the the way that the roof line sort of slopes down almost to the ground uh looks looks amazing mm -hmm. um it's got it's sort of those uh, those gt car uh long hood you know short body uh sort of proportions the whole thing just sort of seems like it's poured over the wheels um it's just a gorgeous looking car. And, you know, in, in classic Toyota Lexus fashion, uh, whenever they start talking about a sports car, particularly a halo car, uh, mm -hmm. they, they've got to remind you that, hey, we built the LFA. Remember how awesome that was? So yeah. this is also another one of those vehicles that's going to get a little bit of that LFA secret sauce. 
Um, interestingly, one of the things that most people think about when they say, uh, like, what's the most memorable thing about the L LFA? It's the exhaust note. This car does not have an exhaust. So I'm assuming they're talking about some of the uh, sort of lightweight building secret sauce and sort of the chassis mm -hmm. tuning, not the, yeah. the awesome Yamaha tuned exhaust note. Though maybe with an electric car, they, they, they tune some of that into the fake engine sound you hear inside of the car. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I Craig and I have talked about it in the past where it's like, you know, that like EVs open up so much where it's like, yeah, sure, you can make this silently running vehicle sound like it has a V10 from an LFA. Like, that's easy at this point to just like synthesize some sound and make it play and follow, you know, the, the power band as you're, you know, running flat out. But yeah, this this car, uh, I definitely I really do get kind of like this spiritual LFA successor vibe to it. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what it is, but, you know, sometimes you read things or you listen to a presentation from, you know, executives at an automaker and you're like, I don't get that. Like, it, nah, <laughs> not feeling it. This one, I was yeah. actually like, I was like, uh, yeah, like I definitely see where they're coming from, where they're not saying this is a successor to the LFA, but in the way that an L the LFA was the Lexus, uh, you know, Halo F car. Brands, Halo car, yes. Uh, this will be the halo car for what they call Lexus electrified, which is mm -hmm. their 100% strategy to go or uh, their strategy to go 100% electric by the end of this decade. Um, right. So, yeah, I, I think this is a really cool car to look forward to. But we should say it sounds like it's very far away only because yeah. the specs they gave. They're assuming they will have solid state battery technology ready by then. And. That, I guess that could come sooner than we think, but so far, you know, there hasn't been the big breakthrough on solid state battery tech that I think a lot of automakers thought there would be by now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of this sort of packaging, uh, the 435 mile range that they're talking about, uh, the zero to 60 in two seconds, that's going to require an energy density and, uh, and, 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 and a battery uh, weight that's just kind of unattainable. Right now, uh, again, it's difficult to judge how big these things are, but I'm thinking this is, looks like the very least it'll be like a AMG GT Coupe sized. Uh, so, you know, to, to cram that much energy into something that small, um, solid state battery is, is basically what Toyota's betting big on. But I mean, with numbers like that, I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, the only other, we've seen a lot of sort of electric supercars sort of like, uh, talking those numbers. We've seen things like the, uh, the Tesla Roadster talking, you know, numbers like that zero to 60 in two seconds. Um, you know, now to see sort of Toyota sort of eyeing and putting this sort of performance halo out there is like, you know, this is what we hope to be able to do uh, for performance in the future. It's, it's, I mean, it's wild. Um, I actually have my doubts as to, and I agree with you as to whether we'll see this by the end of the decade, but um, you know, um, as something as the target that they're aiming for um it's very exciting and it looks yeah. amazing <laughs> yeah yeah i totally agree i even get like some mclaren uh vibes up front like 720s from like the mm -hmm. headlight signature it just overall just a very impressive design from lexus and really in my opinion i don't think lexus builds particularly pretty cars anymore uh aside from the lc the lc is the gorgeous. A gorgeous car yeah gorgeous but the stuff that everyone else is buying that doesn't have that kind of lc money you know like the es and you know the gs like they're i mean i don't know I, they're not pretty that's that's my opinion <laughs> right yeah they're um, some they're something <laughs> <laughs> they are something i mean it's yeah. like they're they're mostly they're mostly suvs with giant grills um and yeah. You know, again, looking at the the RZ um, and the other electrified concepts that they're showing, the the large SUV and the sedan, um, it looks like at the very least, uh, large grills are a thing. Well, I mean, they're still the the, the sort of echo of the large grill, um, mm -hmm. but you know, it, maybe maybe we've finally seen uh, grills getting as big as they're going to get <laughs> from like yeah. Yeah, abs absolutely. Evan, if you would just put that previous photo back up, I think we should just talk through the cars we're looking at here for really quickly. You see mm -hmm. 
There is uh, the Lexus electrified sedan to the right of this sports car. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then from there, we have the RZ, which is coming very, very soon. And as we mentioned earlier in the show, is based on the BZ4X, which is related to the Subaru Solterra. And then uh, after that is what they just called the electrified large concept. So maybe that's related to the Toyota uh, BZ large concept they showed as well. What they did not talk about is to the left. The left that looks like a shooting brake, an electric wagon, and then like something similar to that. And then there's even a convertible down there, it looks like. Right. It does look like those are very similar uh, from the shoulders down, those three. And so they could be like, uh, you know, uh, just sort of variants of, Here's what we expect to do. Once once we've built an electric sedan and an electric coupe, well, then we could just lop the top off of one of them and have like a, an electric, you know, uh, convertible or, you know, uh, in markets that'll, again, because the sort of, uh, a lot of the sort of work of the platform being flexible allows them to do all sorts of crazy stuff with the body work and it, it would enable them to do um, uh, lower volume sort of configurations with less of sort of a hit. Uh, Maybe they could offer a shooting brake or a wagon, um, particularly in areas like Europe where people still buy wagons. Um, Mm -hmm. They could, they can make a pretty big inroad in there offering a performance, you know, sport turismo uh, sort Mm -hmm. of body style. Um, And it wouldn't cost them too much uh, in sort of like tooling and development and stuff like that. Yeah, hundred percent agree. The but this last... is this is exactly uh, what they were talking about when they when when Akio Toyota said that um, you know the the sort of ability to uh, um, you know play in these sort of like smaller spaces and be more experimental with the type of body like that's that's what you're seeing. That whole left side is people don't buy convertibles anymore, but maybe we can make a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's one of the big fun takeaways from as we see more companies invest in uh, very flexible EV architectures is you can do so much with them. You can, it's like a, it's just a canvas for automakers to do really fun stuff if they want or they think they can. And I hope they do because I think that's going to be one thing that will help people accept EVs more is like, look at the designs you can do with them. Look what's what, look what they're capable of. And you know, it comes back down to dollars and cents is the reason they may take a chance on that is everything you just explained, Antoine, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not because they're like, Oh, let's just have fun. Like, no, it's because it makes sense on a budget. But yeah, I, I think this lineup of, of Lexus, looks very, very promising. And the last takeaway for me on the Lexus models there is it looks like we just talked about how they don't build very pretty cars anymore because of those giant spindle grills. It looks like the Lexus models have a different interpretation of the spindle grill while the sports car, the sedan, and then the stuff off to the left kind of has like this pinched nose look. That's, Mm -hmm. that's really new and very, very different for Lexus because I mean, look at the LC, the ES, the LS, whatever, like that is not the sedan look as it stands today. And I think that is a very, very good looking front fascia. Yeah, it's uh, it's got more of a, you know, like whereas the sort of spindle grill is more of let's let's suck in as much air as possible because we got a lot of power. We need to we need a radiator. And then when you move into electrification, having a giant sort of opening on the front looks kind of stupid. When you're talking mm-hmm. about a sports car, particularly something as low slung as that, uh, you know, the fact that they have that sort of still the sort of echo of a grill, uh, but they also have those sort of large intakes on the bottom. Uh, and and I can't imagine they put them down there for nothing. Um, and it, it makes me think maybe there, there's an aerodynamic pur- purpose for that as far as like, mm-hmm. you know, bringing, bringing air in and through the wheel wells to reduce turbulence or maybe even creating downforce at the front. Um, you know, typically we think of, uh, of EVs having these sort of flat floors, uh, but they also don't have a giant radiator in the front. They don't have an engine between those wheel arches. So the sky's the limit as to what they're actually doing underneath that hood. Uh, maybe they are bringing air in and up over the vehicle uh, so that, you know, the aerodynamics are a lot better, so that it generates downforce, it helps the uh, the coefficient of drag, it helps uh, the performance. Um, it you know the, the the idea of like some 
aerodynamic engineer just sort of going like I could do whatever I want with the front of this car is, is <laughs> actually now that I think about it probably one of the, the more compelling parts uh, for that little engineering nerd part of my brain. Yeah, totally. Like I said, it, it's a it's like a blank canvas. And it it's such an exciting time to be covering this really big shift because there's just so much going on. Uh, but yeah, and sorry, you all just saw me, you know, taking a sip of my drink here, just just needed to, you know, quench you my drink. Thirst. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, a, 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 it, it's it's just lemon lemon water. It's it's nothing adult beverage. Like I'm on the clock still. I, I can't have anything fun <laughs> yet. Um, but yeah, I, I that was really the big takeaway from uh, the Lexus and the Toyota stuff. And you know, we really wanted to focus the show on that stuff because it was just like this, like bam bomb in our lap this week, where you know Toyota is just like here, you have an EV, you have an EV, and here's all these EVs coming. But uh, so we really wanted to focus on that this week. And that mm -hmm. is all we had to say about it, unless you have any parting thoughts on the Toyota. And I Lexus mean, my, my parting exactly. thought is basically that this is, it's, it's all very exciting. You know, somebody drops 30 cars in front of you, you're going to go like, oh man, it's like an auto show in one day. It's just super exciting. Uh, but my takeaway is also that, again, this is all speculation. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, Toyota is again, still the same company. They're, they're kind of, you know, a, a slow company when it comes to development and rolling out products and stuff like this. And this all looks, you know, great. Uh, but then also remember that a lot of these, probably most of these uh, won't make it to the, to the States. So don't expect to, you know, be seeing like all of these sort of crazy colorful concepts over the next couple of wheels. So take it with a grain of salt. I love to be excited about concepts as much as everyone else, but you know, there's still a, a, a skeptical part of my brain going, how much of this is Toyota slash Lexus actually going to pull off? And is it going to look this cool when it gets here? And that is for the future to tell us, because we don't know. Hopefully they look as cool. Hopefully we see many of these vehicles come. But yeah, that is Toyota and Lexus's future as we know it so far today, right in front of your eyes, dear viewers. But mm -hmm. on that note, that is all we have time to talk about. But you can go to theroadshow.com to see more great stuff. Uh, I actually had an interview with Formula One champion Max Verstappen. Uh, he took the win in Abu Dhabi this past weekend. Uh, I got to ask him a few questions. You can go read that. Uh, we have something in the defense of the turbocharged Porsche Boxster you can read about. And all sorts of other news to keep you occupied and keep you going and read all the good stuff over there on the roadshow.com. And uh, just a little bit of housekeeping announcements, you know, if uh, listen up for a second, this is our final show of the year. Uh, so going forward, we're taking a little bit of time off for the holidays, uh, but don't worry because we have a ton of videos coming your way. I am recapping the year with uh, my good friend, video producer, Evan is handling all that good stuff. He gets to stare at my face for like 12, for 12 videos. So you're going to have 12 videos to see. Two of them are already live by this point. So you'll have lots to watch over our holiday break, but you will not be getting these live shows for a couple weeks. Uh, you will see them again in January and uh, oh good, look, there I am. Get, you get to stare at my face, good stuff. But yes, just some housekeeping notes there that this is the last show of the year and it was a great show. And I'm so glad Antoine, you could fill in again for Craig. So thank you so much for being on. Always glad to be here. Yeah, it's awesome to have you. We really appreciate your perspective, your insight information. And also on that note, you know, thank you to you who watches, all of you guys, you're the reason we come here and do this. And, you know, we love talking with you, reading your comments. I want to say thanks to Craig Cole, who helped start this project back in March of 2021. So thank you to Craig. He's not going to watch this because, you know, he's probably on the beach somewhere in, in Michigan in the middle of winter. Um, that makes no sense. <laughs> uh, but thank you to Evan Miller as well, who's been our trusty video guy through 95% of this and for the other 5% thank you to the other uh, video producers who stepped in when Evan wasn't available so big thanks all around because you know we really appreciate it we have fun doing this and I will say on that note that's it have a super wonderful holiday season be safe have fun and we will see you in 2022